31, I had a question on number 21 coming out of section 6.1. And before we get going into the algebra side of things, I want to say that when you come across a problem like this, where you're given two coordinates, two data points, you have two methods for doing this. The first method, which is how the solutions are written right now is you can do it algebraically. So you can do the algebra to solve this problem, but I'm going to tell you this takes a while, right? Takes a while and our brain starts to hurt a little bit. The second method you can do is you can use technology. Now for us, technology comes in the form of a TI-84 calculator, and then we would use something called exponential regression on that calculator, much like we did with linear regression, we would do exponential regression L1, L2, and Y1. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, and I'm actually gonna show you that first because for me personally, I, I prefer this method. I, I like using technology better because it's faster and it doesn't hurt my brain as much when I'm doing, um, when I'm doing problems like this. So if you're ever asked to find an exponential model and you're given two ordered pairs, and specifically, especially when neither of the ordered pairs is a y-intercept, meaning you don't have zero and then some number over here, um, it makes the algebra just that much harder. So that's why I prefer to use technology. So I'm gonna put a little pause in this video. I'm gonna flip over to my calculator and we're gonna run this on our calculators. And then I'll come back and I'll do the algebra for you. But I wanna do my preferred method first just because you might not watch the whole video, so I want you to see the easier method first. All right, I'll, I'll catch you in a bit. Bye. Hey gang, so here's how I would do the problem if, if I came across it. So we were given two ordered pairs, neither of which was the y-intercept. Um, you can see in 18 and 19 you were given y-intercepts. That makes the algebra a little bit easier when you're doing it, but we weren't given that here. So when it comes to that, just put your data in your lists. Um, you can see I have some old data in here, so let me go ahead and clear these out. I don't know if you have data in your list or not, but I'll clear, it's always the clear enter to undo them. And if I look at my two ordered pairs, it looks like the x-coordinates are negative two and three. And then the y-coordinates are six and one, and they're matched up um, correctly. So then all you have to do, go back to your home screen, second in mode, and instead of running linear regression like we did in chapter four, we're now gonna run exponential regression. And as we start to move through chapter six, we're going to do a lot more regressions. We're going to do exponential, logarithmic, logistic. But this one they asked us right here, they said get an exponential function. So let's get an exponential model. So if we head into our regressions, we'll hit stat, calc. And if you remember in chapter four, we did, we did linear, which was stat calc eight. Um, a little bit in chapter five, um, we did some quadratic and cubic for one or two examples, but we're going to go all the way down to zero where it says exponential regression. Hit enter, and then I'm going to do second L1, comma, second L2. And if you wanted to drop that into Y1, if you ultimately wanted to make a scatter plot and look at this, this graph, you could. And then I hit enter, and there it is. So I see that my, my A value is 2.93 and my B value is 0.699. And then I can write that up for the A and B value in my exponential model. And it even gives you the function right here, A times B to the X. So I'm going to flip back to my screencast or, or my, my iPad and I'm going to show you how you can do the algebra behind this. But it's, it's going to take me a lot longer. This only takes, a, a, you know, what, 30 seconds on the graphing calculator. So I'll flip back and show you a different way to get to 2.93 for your A value and 0.699 for your B value. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye. Okay, we're back. So if I wanna do this the algebra way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in both ordered pairs to our exponential model and see what we can do in terms of solving for A and B. Because we have two ordered pairs, we will ultimately get two equations and as long as we have two equations, we can solve for A and B because we have two variables and in order to solve for two variables, we need two equations. So we're with that one-to-one -one ratio, we have two variables, we have two equations, so we can make a system of equations and use substitution or elimination or we could graph them if we wanted to. I'm gonna wind up using substitution. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take an x value of negative 2 and a b value, excuse me, a y value of 6. And you see me plugging in 6 for y and negative 2 for x. And so this gives me one of my equations. And then when I plug in x being 3 and y being 1, you see I put in again 1 for y, 3 for x. Here is my second equation. So the two equations that we're looking at right now is I have 6 equaling a times b to the negative 2, and I have 1 equaling a times b cubed. So because I have my two equations and my two unknowns, there is some kind of way for me to solve for this. And it's, it's up to you how you want to do it. When I take a look at this, to me, I see that a is raised to the first power, so that might be an easier variable to solve for. It's not to say I couldn't solve each of these equations for b. You could, but one would involve a cube root and one would involve a square root, so I just saw it as easier to solve for the a, um, a variable. So if I go through that, let me take a look at this first equation. I would have 6 equaling a times b to the negative 2. So if I wanted to solve for a, I would divide by b to the negative 2 on both sides, right? This would cancel. And I would get a being equal to 6 divided by b to the negative 2. But if you remember, negative exponents, well, that's just, I, I call that the traveling exponent. So ultimately, I get 6b squared on the left side, and I get an a over here. Ooh, that looked a little bit funky. Let me rewrite that. So I get 6b squared equaling a. So there's one equation where I've solved for a, and that's why you see that posted up there. Now if I take my second equation, 1 equaling a times b cubed, that's easier to solve for a because I just need to divide by b cubed in this point. And so I get a equaling 1 over b cubed, but again, knowing negative exponents, I can just write that as b to the negative 3. So that's where I'm getting this second equation here. So I have two equations now where a is solved for. So if a is equal to 6b squared and a is also equal to b to the negative 3, then tr through transitivity, right, these two expressions need to be equal to each other, and that's where you see that coming into play here. So then what I decided to do was solve this algebraically. So let me change pen colors just so we can see what's happening. And I'm going to try and solve it right up in here. So I have 6b squared equaling b to the negative 3. Now you have a couple of options here. You can divide both sides by b squared if you want. You could divide both sides by b to the negative 3 if you wanted. I'm going to opt to, solve, uh, to divide both sides by b squared just so I can get the letters on one side and the numbers on the other. And, and let me show you what I mean by this. If I had done... If I divided both sides by b to the negative 3 over here, I would, yes, I would get a 1 on this side, which would be great, but I would have letters and numbers on this side, and I just want to get letters on one side and numbers on the other. So that's why I'm going to opt to divide by b squared. Okay, so if I divide by b squared, there, my number is isolated. Now, b to the negative 3 divided by b to the negative 2, again, when you have two um, powers and their bases are the same, you wind up subtracting their exponents, right? And negative 3 minus 2 is b to the negative 5. And if you're not sure what I'm referencing there, let me just give you a little side one here, right? If I had x cubed, well, let's make it a nicer power. Let's say I had x to the fifth over x squared, right? I have two powers whose bases are the same. What am I going to do with these little exponents? I'm going to subtract them. So this would be x to the 5 minus 2, right, which is x cubed. And that's basically what I'm, not even basically, that's what I'm doing over here. I just have funkier looking numbers. All right, so I have 6 equaling b to the negative 5. Well, again, I can rewrite this. So this is 6 equaling 1 over b to the 5th. And if I solve for b to the 5th, I'm going to get b to the 5th equaling 1 sixth. And then you see me taking that 5th root here to solve for, for that base value. Right, so there's how I'm getting my b value. I've gotten one of my variables solved for at this point. And now I can substitute this b value. I can substitute it into this equation or this equation. And, oh, actually, JK, I don't want to really do that because those are solved for a. What I'm really going to do is I'm going to either substitute it into this equation or this equation. Uh, and in, in all earnestness, you could have sub subbed it into either one of these. You have a lot of options when you're subbing. I just want to stay consistent with the work I did 
down here. So I'm going to use this B value to solve for A, and I'm going to substitute in that B value of 1 -sixth to the 1 -fifth into that B equation. So let me show you what that will look like. I'll move down here, and then I'll change pen colors again just because. So if I have 1 equaling A times B cubed, and we just found out that B in and of itself is 1 -sixth to the 1 -fifth, Oops, excuse me, let me scrunch that in a bit. And I have to now cube it. All right, well, when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply the exponents, and 3 times 1 fifth, sure enough, it is 3 fifths. So I have 1 equaling a times 1 sixth to the 3 fifths. And if I want to solve for a, I know this is ugly. I'm not denying that that number, let me use a different color. I'm not denying this is ugly, but it is just a number. We can calculate that number on our calculator. And since it is just a constant and it's being multiplied to a, if I want to solve for a, I'm going to divide both sides by 1 6 to the 3 fifths. Right, that will cancel here, and ultimately I get a equaling. Well, I have one over one six to the three fifths. I'm going to write that with a negative exponent. So that's where I'm getting now my a value. So I have solved for a and b, and I I agree they're ugly. I'm not at all denying that, but I am getting closer to my end game. So I'm going to change pen colors again. What do we feel like going to? We'll go to purple. No, I think I've already been to purple. Um, what do we feel like? I shouldn't be this indecisive. Let's go to brown. I don't know, brown. Okay, so with my A value and with my B value, so let's just remind ourselves where we are, right? We knew B was equal to 1 -sixth to the 1 -fifth, and I knew A was equal to 1 -sixth to the negative 3 fifths. All right, so as I start to plug in for this, I have f of x equaling a times b to the x. We know that this is equal to, now whatever 1 6 to the negative 3 fifths is equal to, I'll keep that in mind, and then I have 1 6 to the 1 fifth, oops, and all of that raised to the x power, okay? So what I really wanna do is just figure out what are these two numbers equal to? If I could do that, I could probably make my life a little easier. So what I did is I went over to my calculator here and I showed you that 1 6 to the negative 3 fifths is equal to 2.93, and 1 6 to the 1 fifth is equal to 0.699. So keeping those in mind, let me go back to where we were. All right, so 1 6 to the negative 3 fifths, we just said that was equal to 2.93, and 1 6 to the 1 fifth was equal to 0.699. And there, oops, let me put that up, there is my exponential model. All right, and that was a ton of algebra, which is why I go back to what I originally said. I would do this using technology. It's way faster, uh, and it, it just makes your brain bleed a little less. But if you like the algebra, good for you. That's awesome. But I, I would recommend technology. All right, so there is number 21, gang. Thanks so much. Bye.